Good afternoon, everyone. This is Joe Bacella here at Chaken Analytics, and I'd like to welcome you to our presentation of the number one secret to increase profits for your clients, unlocking this little known stock strategy. You are welcome to, pre to submit your questions throughout this webinar using the Zoom Q&A window, which is available in the upper left-hand corner of your screen. As a reminder, this webinar is being recorded and a copy will be sent to everyone who has registered. Now presenting today is Carlton Neal, COO of Chaken Investments. Carlton spent five years as a VP at JP Morgan before working alongside market guru, Dr. Martin Zweig at Zweig Mutual Funds for nearly 20 years. To get us started this afternoon, here's Carlton Neal. Hey, thanks a lot, Joe. It's great to be on the webinar with everybody today. Looks like I'll be carrying the ball solo as Mark is on a flight down to Florida. Uh, we've been very fortunate here at Shaken Analytics and Shaken Investments, where I'm now the uh, Chief Operating Officer. We teamed up with New York Life, um, and they, through their Index IQ, launched an ETF um, based on the NASDAQ Shaken Small Cap about six months ago, and Mark is on the road talking about that uh, ETF. We'll go into that a little bit. But uh, as Joe mentioned, a few things about me. I spent five years as vice president at JP Morgan back in the early 1990s. I was fortunate enough to be hired in 1995 by Dr. Martin Zweig. Marty became both a good friend and a mentor over the years. I learned a lot from Marty. Uh, I'm fortunate to be with Mark Chaikin now as well here at Chaikin Analytics. I've been here for about a year. Um, I've learned a lot from Mark as well. Uh, talking about Marty, it turns out that Mark and I were both you know, good friends with Marty. Mark knew Marty quite well in the 80s, the 90s, and the early 2000s. And we both learned from Marty a few things that we'll try to uh, imbue into the presentation today. Things like don't fight the Fed, or beware the crowds at the extreme, or really my favorite, which is the trend is your friend. So for 21 years, I managed mutual funds. I know many of the people on the call here are your advisors. Every day, you're in the trenches with the market trying to determine what the right thing to do for your clients is. And I uh, hope that t in this next hour or so, we'll be able to give you some great ideas and show you that there is a tool out there for you to use. So what does it take to be a profitable investor? What do you need to do to help your clients be successful? Well, one of the things that we've really identified is that if you use a system like the Chaikin Power Gauge, if you have a, a approach to the market, you can find bullish and bearish stocks. You can find stocks that are predisposed to rise, and you can avoid ones that might go down. You can use the check and money flow, which Mark had developed back in the 80s, to determine where future price movements might be of stocks. We also drill down into sectors and industries and even ETFs. We actually are going to be coming out with an ETF rating before the end of the year that not only will show you what things are in the ETF or the costs of those ETFs, but indeed something called the power bar, the number of stocks that are bullish or very bullish in the ETF versus ones that are bearish or very bearish. The power bar currently already does that for sectors and, and industries. We will also look at the strongest stocks and recognize that you really want to be playing in those sectors and industries where you find the happiest hunting. The rising tide lifts all boats, and you really want to be focused in sectors and industries where things are do going well. And ultimately, one of the things that can be a real detriment to portfolio returns are landmines. Uh, we used to talk about this all the time. Sometimes it's not what you own that, that makes you do well. It's what you avoid. You need to play good defense. You need to be out of the stocks that aren't doing well. So Joe, maybe we'll sort of kick it off by asking a question out there. Are you thinking about a bear market? Um, Joe, maybe you can throw that out to the audience. Yeah, absolutely. We um, The Q&A window is available. If you don't mind, tell us a little bit. Um, typically, in these cases, we can treat this like a poll question. Um, are you more bullish on the market or are you more perhaps a little more cautious going forward? Or tell us if you're feeling a bit uncertain. Um, just look for that icon in the upper left-hand corner of the page that says Q&A and just let us know your reaction at this point. Yeah, we definitely have seen on previous webinars that uh, it's very dependent on what people, you know, who they listen to. Um, if, if you're uh, reading 
subject matter that's very bearish, you tend to be bearish. If you tend to have people that are bullish around you, you kind of have that view. But I'm just very interested to see what the advisor community out there on this uh, webinar is thinking. Do we have kind of some results here, Joe? Reading through the results, I'm getting a sense of caution going forward. Interesting. Uh, have been some comments about being more bullish, but I'm seeing more of a cautious approach in the market. Yeah, well, given what small caps are doing today, I guess it's not really surprising. Um, a few things that we kind of looked at um, that I would like to just share with everybody are, it's interesting that unsettled politics and sort of geopolitical events typically don't cause bear markets. Um, we've got a few listed here, you know, 63, the, the uh, assassination, the tragic assassination of JFK, the bull market um, came right back, you know, in 1998. Obviously, there was a lot of things going on with uh, Bill Clinton, but the bull market continued forward. Even in 2004, with the uh, prison scandal in Abu Ghraib, um, you saw the bull market continued. And indeed, we've clearly got some uncertainty. You know, Trumponomics. Um, we've looked through the Trump agenda. Clearly, we all thought that healthcare reform was going to have repeal and replace was much talked about during the election. The Republicans have been promising it since the day it was passed. And indeed, we've got nothing on health care. Uh, infrastructure rebuild would obviously be a powerful economic force for the, for the uh, economy and thus for the market. I can tell you living in Philadelphia, we could use some infrastructure rebuild, um, but indeed, we haven't seen anything on that. Military bulk up, um, beginning to see a little bit of that, but it'll inter be interesting to see if the next budget allows for it. We've got tax reform on the table, but still a lot of uncertainties. The only thing we've really gotten and we know are executive orders that have caused regulation rollback. And that may be one of the things that has kept this market powered forward. But you know, let's look at the chart of the S&P 500. Um, as I mentioned, Marty Zweig always said, the trend is your friend. Um, I know many market participants believe that, and indeed, you can see that we've wound up having a very strong market. As a matter of fact, um, we go back to this area here, the, ghost, no, the Ghostbusters sign, the no smoking sign, whatever you want to call it, um, back in, in March and April, it sort of looked like maybe the market was going to have some kind of a correction, uh, but that was very short-lived. And what's been going on? Well, we've been seeing something called the check and money flow, which you can see is the green and red um, bar at the bottom with the arrow going over. Check and money flow is a measure of institutional buyers in the market. It can be a stock, it can be an actual index. And here on the SPY, a lot of institutional investors use the spider as a way to get very fast uh, action and, and exposure to the market. And we can see that the check and money flow has been very strong. Even as we've kind of gone up here toward the top of the range and people are telling you, oh, this market might be overbought. No, the check and money flow has remained very strong. And I think the best definition of a bull market might be higher highs and higher lows. If you see the market continue to make higher highs and the lows that are corrective are not that much lower than the previous uh, high, you can tell yourself that this bull market probably still has legs. Uh, another couple little things before we move on to talking specifically about the check and power gauge is housing starts. Housing starts have remained very strong. They typically roll over before you find a recession. And indeed, leading indicators down here is something else that we look at. We've never had a bear market or very few. I think in 87, we had one, maybe a couple other cases. But basically, you rarely have a bear market without the leading economic indicators rolling over and going into a recession. So economically, things look very strong. You can see we're at new cycle highs for the leading indicators. And what's been really happening? Well, the bottom line is we say ignore the headlines. This is a Yogi Berra market. It ain't over till it's over. Going back to what we were talking about on this chart here, where the Ghostbusters sign is, what happened? Well, the New York Times ra ran a story saying caution signals are blinking for the Trump bull market. Um, but what was really happening? Well, the market direction was still very positive. The trend in corporate earnings actually was starting to go in the right direction. Uh, Q2 earnings were very good, and we know Q3 earnings have been even better. The trend of interest rates, while it's been sort of trendless, is actually a good thing. You know, that's the old Marty Zweig, uh, don't fight the Fed. 
Um, the Fed has been fairly friendly. They've remained friendly. Money's been relatively easy globally. And while interest rates have started to creep up a little bit, it's been nothing to be too worried about. And then if you focus on certain sectors and groups, those are the areas of the market that have wound up doing very well. Uh, ultimately, it does come down to stock selection. Um, truly, it doesn't really matter whether you are just focused on ETFs or still in mutual funds or how you allocate your money. Most of your clients still want to talk stocks. And I think we have a great tool here that I know when you become a subscriber, you'll look and realize that we have a way for you to figure out what the clients should be looking at. One thing that I know, because I've been involved in the market, as I mentioned, for you know nearly 27 years, portfolio manager for 21 years, information overload. Uh, this cartoon kind of caught my eye. I always thought it was really funny because when I was a portfolio manager, that's about what my desk looked like. Uh, I got analyst reports from my own analysts. I printed out reams of documents. You know, everybody said that, hey, once we have computers, the era of, of paper is gone totally false. You get on the train, you need to read things. But what happens? Um, you just get total information overload. Well, we have a way to cut through that clutter. Um, we, we say that at Chaikin, we can tame big data. If you look on the right here, uh, those spreadsheets are things that I looked at all the time. I mean, my analysts would come in with a spreadsheet, a bunch of fancy numbers, um, certainly research reports that I know many of you read at your own firms are just loaded with data. And ultimately, it's really hard to cut through that. You really need a tool to be able to do that. And what's fascinating to me about this is here we've got LAM Research, um, March 27th. This, this slide has probably used, been used in a number of webinars over the last several months. March 27th, LAM Research, very bullish stock at 127.80. And where is it now? It's over $200. So. The, the process works and we'll get into it deeper here in a minute. So Chaikin Analytics is the tool that we think um, has allows you to do these things. I know that I've already started using it. I used it when I came on board. I used to be an eat my own cooking kind of portfolio manager. I believe that if you believe in your process, you should own your own uh, mutual funds, i.e. eat my own cooking. So when I started at Chaikin, I completely revamped my own portfolio and utilized Chaikin Analytics. And it has given me stunning success. I've been in incredibly pleased with what I've been able to do with it. You know, other pros that have used Chaikin Analytics, um, Mark uh, was uh, very much invested in, in working with Paulson and George Soros. Uh, Mark's been on CNBC, I've been on CNBC. Uh, ben Zynga uh, gave us a great FinTech award Mark's been quoted in Forbes and Barron's, and you know, we, we really find that a lot of people that have used us have enjoyed enormous success. So what, what allows you to get those success? Well, it's a directional edge. Um, we all know that fundamentals really drive stock prices, yet you really need to know what the technicals are doing and when to be uh, cautious on a stock, when there's a good entry point in a stock, and the technicals will ultimately make that decision for you. When you line up the fundamentals and the technicals, you're giving yourself a combination of forces that allow you to make money in the stock market. Um, our multi-factor quantitative model, which is certainly a mouthful, really distills all that clutter and that information down into one easy rating for everybody and anybody to understand. Uh, as a bonus, we also have buy and sell signals that give you better entries into stock prices or into stocks. Um, I know that, you know, as a portfolio manager for many years, we would look at a stock and recognize that, you know, fundamentally it might make sense, but we got to respect the technicals. And ultimately, if you get a buy or a sell signal, it's going to allow you better entry points. One thing that uh, I know that many of you recognize because you have your own discipline is that anybody who's an investor needs a, a disciplined methodology. You know, whatever that methodology is. If you're a value investor and you look at certain things, that's a methodology. If you're a growth uh, manager, you might be looking at other things. But without a methodology, without a plan for investing, you're likely going to fail as an investor. And I know that most people on the call are pros and you do have a methodology you see with your clients. They, they typically sort of jump around and you really have to uh, 
push a very specific methodology and a discipline on your clients. I think with Chaken, what I have found is that it gives you a built-in methodology. It allows you to know when to enter a stock. You, you get a very simple rating of a stock that gives you that edge that everybody needs when they're trying to determine when to get into a stock. So going through, let's, let's look at what we've got. Before we go under the hood and really recognize what's built, let, let's take a look at what we would call a classic chicken bull. This is where the power gauge rating is bullish. And every stock basically is rated um, in the Chaikin system, very bearish, bearish, neutral, bullish, or very bullish. So we look for stocks that are rated bullish. We also want relative performance to be strong. This is where the technicals start to line up and agree with the, with the fundamentals. Um, you know, ultimately, if the market doesn't agree with you, the market always wins. And I, I just, I love that. This goes along with Marty's concept of the trend is your friend. Mark talks about this a lot. If the market doesn't agree with you, the market always wins. So you definitely want things to line up where the relative performance is strong. And then lastly, we've got the check and money flow. Um, that's one of the secrets that we'll be delving more into uh, through this webinar, but it's really about the check and money flow being strong. You want institutions in there buying your stock alongside of you. Here's an example. Um, we've got you know hundreds of them. Uh, applied Materials is one that really went bullish all the way back in late 2016. Uh, I think my screen here is showing something else, but you can see that uh, 2016, uh, it went from a neutral stock. Um, one of the things we started seeing was institutions were buying it. And ultimately, the stock, we had the market agreeing with the model. This is your classic shake and bull. We got a number of buy signals along the way. These were relative strength buys. We'll go into some of the other signals that are programmed in Shaken Analytics. But basically, we give you the buy signals along the way. You can see those are the green triangles here on the chart and ultimately what was happening here well the the stock continued to rise largely because of institutional buying the market agreed with the model the model was basically bullish or very bullish throughout the entire year here's uh, i think a real world example of back in late may when Mark was getting ready for one of his webinars, he screened for classic bulls. Um, he went in and said, let's use the Chaken Analytics tool uh, that you'll be using. And this is, I think, one of the great screens on there. There's the Workspace Discovery Screener and an ETF up top. This is the screener engine. So you can start with whatever universe you like. Um, we typically use the Russell 3000 as the screening universe. We made sure that all the stocks were very bullish. Um, that would be making it through the screen. Um, we also wanted money flow, and this is what we were talking about, the cl classic check and bear, um, bull, excuse me, uh, the money flow being very uh, high and persistent and relative strength being high and persistent. The other thing that we threw out there is that we wanted the power gauge to be very, uh, I'm sorry, the earnings surprise to be strong. Consistency and, and earnings surprises really do make powerful tools uh, for stocks to rise. And earnings surprise, we know in general, winds up seeing a market, uh, a, a stock move, uh, certainly to the upside if it's, if it's a beat on the upside. We also then wanted only market cap stocks of mid and large. And what we found were 13 names that made it through the screen. What's interesting is of these 13 names, and granted it's been a bull market, but of these 13 names, only one of them, Everest Re, which is a reinsurance company, actually is down and it's only down slightly since May. Uh, the other 12 are all up. And as a portfolio, if you had bought sort of an equally weighted of each of these stocks, you would have been up 18.5% using that classic shake and bull versus the market, which was up 6.8. I mean, these are exactly the things that I've been doing in my own portfolio, utilizing the Chaken Analytics, uh, rebuilding my portfolio periodically as I look through my portfolio and determine what I should be doing to change what I, what I own. What about the bear side? Well, many of you may not short, maybe you don't use 
put options, but we all know that at some point you have to sell a stock and you will get that information through Chaikin Analytics. You can see that if the power gauge rating is bearish and the relative performance is weak, so really just the opposite of what's been happening on the bull side, and the Chaikin money flow, i.e. we get institutional selling in the stock, that is your classic Chaikin bear setup. Here's an example. Uh, we've been using this example since the moment I got to Chaikin. It's Under Armour. Uh, we all know at this point because it's been in the headlines so much. But back in late 16, I think there were still a lot of people that were bullish on uh, Under Armour. Certainly it had come down a lot, but it had been a darling of the hedge fund community. A lot of people still believed that Under Armour was going to take over the apparel world. Um, a lot of the top name basketball stars were signing up with Under Armour. Um, you know, a couple of the golfers were using Under Armour. It was kind of the darling of the whole uh, apparel industry, if you will. And yet, all the way back in 2016, the power gauge had gone very bearish on the stock. It had also, along the way, shown many uh, relative strength sells. And what did we see? Well, early in the year, we had a massive earnings uh, disappointment and the stock gapped lower. And you could say, well, that might have been a good buying opportunity. Nope. The power gauge was still very bearish. Um, the market was agreeing with the model, and institutions were continuing to sell. This is not a stock that you wanted to touch. And frankly, even in this last earnings report, which was actually a little bit of a surprise on the upside, the stock still went down. And what's been happening? Institutions have continued to sell. This is a classic Chaikin bear stock. So... Going into it, again, the Chaikin power gauge is reliable. Um, I know Mark refers to it as a Chevrolet with a Ferrari engine. I think that uh, doesn't do it enough service. I think it's a heck of a chassis as well. Uh, but the idea is that the engine is really the driver and there is not a whole lot that you need to do and cut through the clutter and use a simple but powerful tool. Um, we call it a GPS during earnings season. Clearly, we're coming at the back end of, of earnings season, but all year long, there's, there's no wrong time to search for stocks. Uh, Mark did a, a really great um, conference up in New York at the Kramer Conference. Uh, and um, while Mark was speaking, Jim Kramer tweeted out, uh, Chaikin Analytics model is the best, used it in my old hedge fund. We all know how successful Jim has been, and you know it was just great to see Jim uh, toss out a nice call out for Mark while he was in the midst of talking to a, a really good audience, including a number of Chaikin subscribers who were, who were thrilled to see Mark in person. Um, so what is in the power gauge? Well, this, this is where I was really attracted to working with Mark. As I said, I've been a mutual fund manager for a long time. And I know that there are many drivers of stocks. Um, it's hard to pinpoint all of them, but I think this is the amazing thing about Chicken Analytics. It looks at four primary factors, uh, and each one of these primary factors has five sub-factors. So one of the primary factors is value. Um, I'll fully admit I've always had a little bit of a value bias. I always believe that low debt to equity is important. Um, you want to be buying stocks with a relatively low price to book. Um, you want a stock that has a return on equity. A low price to sales is always also very nice to have. And then, of course, there's Warren Buffett's favorite, free cash flow to market cap. Uh, if a stock has high free cash flow, it's hard to cheat on free cash flow. You know if the stock's got the free cash flow, they probably are going to make it through the next downturn. But you know, ultimately, I also recognize that growth factors are exceedingly important. You don't, you can easily wind up in a value trap. We've been in through a market now where value has been vastly underperforming growth. So it's important to find those growth fa factors as well. Indeed, what we've seen, what do we see here? Well, earnings growth, one of the key components. Uh, we've put a box around earnings surprise. I think we've already alluded to the fact that some of the names um, like the, the classic chicken bulls typically have earnings surprises, and we'll see in a moment why that's important. Earnings trends, you want to see earnings going up. Ultimately, a projected PE that's relatively low, 
um, based on earnings rising is always important as well. And then lastly, earnings consistency. Um, you know, when you're all over the map and you never know what you're going to get quarter to quarter, it's very hard to be an investor in that stock. But, you know, even though the, mark, the model is 85% fundamental, uh, technicals do matter. Things like price trend, the price trend rate of change, the money flow, as we've already pointed out, which is another overlay that you can look at separately within Chaikin Analytics. Uh, relative strength versus the market, which we've sort of pointed out. And ultimately, a stock that has good volume is technically a good stock. Sentiment is what uh, we sort of refer to as our secret sauce. Uh, Marty Zweig was always a user of sentiment. That's why when I started working with Mark, I was really impressed that these were actually operationalized in a model. So these factors, these five factors, things like earnings estimate trend. And why is the arrow there? Because what happens after an earnings surprise? Well, typically, earnings estimate trends start to rise. In other words, a stock reports an earnings surprise, and then boom, all of a sudden the estimates trends start to rise. Um, short interest, you know, who better than short sellers who are really the experts at determining whether or not a stock is in peril or not to sort of piggyback on. When all the other fundamentals line up, something like short interest is really an interesting and important sentiment indicator. Insider activity, another one you rarely see in most quantitative models. Insider activity, who better than the owner of his own stock um, to buy and, and prove that in the next 12 to 18 months, the stock should be doing well. And then analyst ratings and ultimately industry relative strength. This is another thing that we'll be touching upon. You really want to make sure that you're in stocks and industries where there's ongoing strength. So this 20-factor model, it looks complicated, but you get one rating. Boom, very bullish there on the left. LAM Research, again, there's the example. It's been there forever. Uh, it's still very bullish, still doing well. So what, what performance have we actually gotten from the power gauge? Well, here you go. This is exactly the kind of stair step you want to see. And granted, this goes all the way back to a back-tested period of 99. Uh, the mo model was locked down, though, in September of 2010. Uh, as a result, you could argue that there's been an out-of-sample since 2011. And what have you gotten? The very bearish stocks have vastly underperformed the bearish, which have outperformed the neutral, which have underperformed the bullish, and then ultimately it's that very bullish category where you really wanted to be. Um, 2016, so I would make the case that this is out of sample, and indeed, what have we seen? We've seen the very bullish stocks vastly outperforming the very bearish. So if you had been in 2016 in these bullish and very bullish stocks, you did much better than the market did in 2016. Well, what about 2015? Well, you know, clearly 2015, we, a lot of people said, oh, we haven't had a bear market since the catastrophe of 2008, 2009. But, uh, you know, if you were in energy stocks, you felt that bear market in 2015. Um, even small caps really dramatically underperformed in 2015. So, you know, we have seen bear markets even within this bull move. And it's important to recognize that there's a bear look lurking out there whether it's within a certain sector or a certain industry, and you really want to be avoiding those stocks. So regardless of whether this bull market powers on or not, you know, we've been relatively constructive, believe that there's a lot of reasons to stick with this market. Um, there's always an opportunity to get out of bad names. There's always an opportunity to find a bear market somewhere. Uh, we also were really fortunate that uh, three and a half years ago, Mark launched the NASDAQ Chaikin series. There are three of them. There's a small cap, a large cap, and a dividend achiever. Uh, New York Life Mainstay, as I mentioned at the top of the webinar, uh, launched one of them so far. And it looks like they may launch the other two, but they launched the small cap as the IQ Chaikin small cap. And here's the reason why. And so here's, here's really the proof of, of concept. These are a three-year live track record. Um, this, is, this is recognized by the SEC as a live track record. Um, all ETFs are based off of a track record or an index. And you can see that the NASDAQ benchmark for large cap, small cap, dividend 
uh, achiever was far outstripped over that three and a half year period um, by the NASDAQ chicken index. Um, we utilize the same IP that we're talking about here, the intellectual property, the power gauge. The power gauge is the ultimate arbiter of whether a security gets into any of these. And indeed, the small cap, um, which is, uh, as I said, was launched by uh, Index IQ. Uh, it's the IQ chicken small cap has a, a three and a half year track record of vast outperformance. So this is live performance and this is only an annual rebalance. So if you think that somehow this is a complicated system that you have to keep utilizing uh, on a daily basis, that's not true. Um, this is a simple annual rebalance. Uh, I typically do the same thing with my own portfolio. I run it through Chaken Analytics only periodically. Uh, clearly monitor it. I'm sure you do that with your own clients, uh, but you do not need to, to, to get in the weeds on any, any short term period of time. You can, you can use ch chicken analytics um, periodically and still wind up finding great names. So here um, just is the CSML. This is the uh, IQ chicken small cap. This is not a recommendation, but again, in the last three months, um, it's at the top of the heap in the small cap blend category. So ultimately, this is what I've always believed too. And I know that all of you as advisors recognize that while technicals really do matter, ultimately fundamentals drive the market. And these are the five things that I'd like to just kind of point out. And that is, is that analyst expectations set the stage. Whatever the earnings expectations are and whatever an analyst say, that sort of sets the stage. But earnings will drive the stock prices. So an earnings surprise creates an opportunity whether it's an earnings surprise to the upside or an earnings surprise to the downside, um, the earnings surprises are going to create some sort of opportunity for you to invest or buy a stock for your client. Ultimately, valuations matter. I do believe that uh, you, know, you can get a stock, uh, cult stocks, we've already referred to Under Armour as one where valuation was very stretched. Um, it wasn't time to get out before the market turned, but once it did, those earnings surprises created an opportunity in the case of that one as a bear stock. And then typically earnings group trends persist. I mean, you look across the landscape, whether it's been the energy stocks as referred to in 2015, or if we look through what's been happening in retail, uh, on the negative side, semiconductors have obviously had a fabulous year. So industry group trends do matter. Uh, three very important takeaways that I'd like to share with everybody on the call. There are three, three key indicators that we look at. Uh, I think this will make using Chaken Analytics very simple and easy for everybody. I think it's the type of thing that you'll look at it and recognize, aha, yes, that's the dynamic duo, or yes, I do look for personality changes in stocks. That is clearly a personality change, and we'll go through what that means. And then ultimately, one of the things that we talked about, one of the secrets that we've got out there is the stealth accumulation and distribution. This is the Chaken money flow. We'll go into a little bit more detail on that. So what is the dynamic duo? Well, the dynamic duo is really when you can find big winners and losers. Um, relative strength, as Mark has pointed out for years, this is you know, very much his technician background. It can stand alone as a bullish or bearish indicator. But ultimately, you want things to line up. You want a power gauge rating that is in one direction. In this case, we'll point out bullish stocks but you also then want shake and relative strength to be positive. And that is really the dynamic duo. So you can get superior returns and find stocks that are going to outperform from stocks that are already outperforming and additionally have a power gauge rating. Here's Apollo Global, um, you know, a great stock to be looking at as an example here. You've gotten uh, several earnings surprises, mainly to the upside. In this case, you've had several relative strength buys, but this is what we talk about the dynamic duo. It's when the market agrees with the model. Uh, we've basically seen the stock be bullish or very bullish very consistently for the last year. Um, the check and money flow above, you can see we've seen institutional buying in the stock and it is consistently been relative strength has been positive. So here's the example of the dynamic duo where the, where the market and the model are both agreeing. 
Again, we talked about if the market doesn't agree with you, the market always wins. You really want the combination of technicals and fundamentals. So the fundamentals are the power gauge being bullish, and the technicals are that the relative strength and the shaken money flow are both signaling that it's a good place to enter. And again, here are a bunch of the little relative strength buy signals. And if you had entered in any of them, if you had entered here, once the, the relative buy came in here, um, if you had gone in back in late July, I guess that might be more like mid-July, you could see that it was a great entry point in the stock. No different here. Uh, once the uh, short selling or whatever had, had abated, we got some positive money flow, got, a, got an alert here for a buy. It was a great time to buy in front of the earnings that were coming a few weeks later. Uh, here's Mattel. Uh, Mattel, you know, a lot of people said, oh, this was an easy one when, uh, when Toys R Us filed for bankruptcy. Well, that was weeks ago. Um, yet still, what we've seen is that for well over the last year, the model has been bearish or very bearish on Mattel. Um, nothing against toy companies. I've got four kids of my own. I might have kept these guys in business before they moved on to sports. So, you know, in general, I'm thinking to myself, well, Mattel, it's been a great name uh, for many, many years, but it just did not look good in the model. So again, um, what happened here? Well, the market agreed with the model because the market is almost always right. Well, I guess we could say always, always wins, as we said. So here, the relative strength to the S&P 500 was very negative in the stock. A series of terrible earnings reports, including this last one, where I guess it was so expected to be so poor that the market kind of rallied the name, and but now it's back at, it's at its old low. I'm guessing this was some short covering in here. But what did you get? Right after this earnings report, you had a relative strength sell. Well, before this one, you had a relative strength sell. Before that one, you had a relative strength sell. Again, just like we talked about the S&P 500, higher highs, higher lows. What's been happening in Mattel? Lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, lower highs. And the dynamic duo is in force. The Chaikin money flow is negative. The relative strength has been poor. And the power gauge, the fundamentals of the stock have been quite negative. So what are the key to making and keeping profits? Uh, well, it's also about spotting personality changes, which was the second thing that we wanted to kind of convey to you out there and how to use Chaikin Analytics um, in your practice. What is a personality change? Well, here's, here's Johnny, right? Boom. We all remember this movie. Uh, mild manner guy, writer, goes absolutely crazy. Well, stocks can do the same thing. First Solar, this is a really interesting case. Uh, I remember, you know, years ago, managing money um, was always kind of dumbfounded by how well the stock had done. Uh, again, another darling of the hedge fund community. A lot of uh, managers that focused on, on uh, environmental activism and whatnot uh, loved the solar stocks. The solar stocks were going crazy back in, you know, 2014 and 15. Um, you know, then things really went sour. I think First Solar was, you know, well above 60 at one point a few years ago, kind of went through a bit of a bear market. But what happened in May? Um, this is the personality change. What happened? We saw that the stock had been vastly underperforming um, the market. And all of a sudden, when the money flow changed, and this is what we were looking at here, this is the personality change, you've seen the relative strength or the market start to reward this name and go positive relative to the performance of the market, and the power gauge went bullish. Power gauge went bullish partly because we had a couple nice earnings surprises. Valuations weren't crazy. Of those 20 factors, the fundamentals were kicking in, and now the market started agreeing with that, and that's the personality change. Going from relative strength that's negative to the S&P 500, money flow that had been more negative than positive, and then suddenly you started seeing the personality change and it started outperforming the market. Again, the Mr. Market was telling you this stock could rise. And indeed what happened back here in July, you got a relative strength buy. And we'll go over some of the other buy signals before the end of the webinar, but really powerful stuff here. Relative strength buy here, 
You could have been buying that stock at 35 on its way to nearly 60. So great example of a personality change to the positive. Here's, a, here's one that's very recently gone negative. Um, you know, I know that uh, maybe some of you drive Teslas. Tesla, it's a fun car to drive. It might be the most fun car I've ever been in. Um, I really think that it's a great product. But let's face it, the stock is a cult stock, and it is incredibly stretched on valuation. But you'll see even stretched on valuation, the, 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 the power gauge was not making it negative. Why? Because the technicals was, were still okay in the stock. As a matter of fact, some of the technicals were pretty good. But the fundamentals did not give you that. But now what happened? We just had a bearish personality change. So the fundamentals are problematic for the stock. And what happened? We've now seen over here in September the bearish personality change. We started seeing it underperform the market, and we're starting to see institutions sell it. And what happened? Very negative earnings surprise. Down seven and three quarters percent on their earnings number. Uh, about a week ago, and this you know is a, a classic example of a personality change in a stock. Probably not one that you want to start sniffing at, um, even if you love the car. Here's one from a few years ago. Um, I think it's kind of fun to look at because it really does show how a personality change can persist and really save people money, um, save you and your clients money. Here you had a personality change back in 2015. Uh, stock had actually been relatively, you know, another semi, uh, sorry, another uh, solar stock. Um, looked like, you know, solar stocks doing really well. But what happened here? We saw that institutions started selling the stock heavily. This was another darling of the hedge fund community. A lot of guys started liquidating. Uh, the stock started dropping. It was dropping. That meant that it started underperforming the S&P 500, and you had a terrible earnings report. So bearish stock, big-time personality change with shaken money flow going negative, and ultimately it underperforming the market. So we also started to see the money flow sells. There was one of your sells. There was another one. And you know what? When a stock is going down like this, there's no wrong time to sell. Um, we've got this little thing up here that Sun Edison filed Chapter 11. That's why the chart ends here. They filed bankruptcy in, in May of 2015. Um, and ultimately, we got a, I'm sorry, 16. Uh, we got a little testimonial from um, maybe one of your colleagues, Edward, who is an advisor at Merrill Lynch. And this is no dig on Merrill. Uh, I used a lot of Merrill's research. I thought there were some really good analysts. But you really do need an independent third-party researcher. As an advisor, it's important that you go to your clients, not only with your best research from your own office, but from an independent third-party researcher. And here's uh, Edward, who said, I bought Sun Edison at 15 bucks, which my firm Merrill Lynch was still recommending. If I had been using Chaikin, I would have saved my a lot of money and pain. And I'm sure part of his pain was that his clients called him to complain. Um, you know, the analyst eventually, I think, put a sell on it at $3, but that was a lot of, a lot of dollars ago. Uh, so another guy that I, you know, followed over the years, I know Warren Buffett, many of you clearly admire him like I do, but what I love is this quote from him. They don't call balls and strikes on Wall Street, so you don't have to swing at everything. You can wait for your pitch. Um, it's what he calls the ideal setup. Um, the, the ideal setup is the fat pitch. Um, he, he really looks at stocks and says, I don't have to be in everything. I want to find a name that really is one that I can believe in. And that's kind of what we try to do for you. We try to find those fat pitches for you. Um, you can screen for check and buys and sells. You can look for the six buy signals, which are an oversold buy. Uh, a lot of people that are looking for names that are maybe in an uptrend, but making that, as we talked about, higher lows, you can buy them on a dip. You want a momentum bake breakout. Some people are more momentum investors. You can utilize that. You can look for a reversal buy, a money flow buy. We've talked about that as one of the, the Chaikin um, setups where you would find a money flow buy is something being very powerful. Uh, relative strength buy and relative strength uh, breakout buy. Similarly, on the sell side, 
You can look for stocks that maybe have created a sell signal, whether you're a short seller or use options, or even just to exit positions within your or your client's portfolios. Um, you can use all six of them. I've used them at different points myself in my own portfolio. And this is the dashboard that you would get. So this is from our iPad version. So uh, when you become a Chaken Analytic subscriber, um, you get both the iPad and the desktop version. And here are this an example of a portfolio that we had set up. Uh, we've circled Boeing um, as sort of the alert, uh, bullish alert and uh, Bed Bath & Beyond, but frankly, it didn't really matter if you'd looked at Express Scripts or Trinity or Intuitive Surgical. All these names had buy signals, and uh, in, in this particular case, they've, they've done quite well. Bed Bath & Beyond, a retailer, I'm sure you're all aware of it. Uh, we can take a look at what the charts did. So here's Boeing. Boeing, you can see here was the uh, overbought, uh, I'm sorry, oversold buy signal that came back uh, shortly after the monster earnings report from last quarter. Uh, a lot of people would have said, geez, I can't buy a stock that's moved from you know, a little over 200 to nearly 240. That's, that's a big move for me to think about getting involved. But as it pulled back, uh, you got an oversold buy um, right here. And indeed, you would have been buying that stock in the mid-230s on its way to you know, over 260. Um, happened again recently, but you know, very easy and clean to see. You can actually, in, in the analytics tool, when you subscribe, you can click there, and all of them are defined. You, know, you can go back. Each one of these is defined in Shaken Analytics. You get some very powerful tool that then you can find a good entry point for your stock. Similarly, um, here's Bed Bath & Beyond, stock that's had multiple chances of a relative strength sell, uh, where you've gotten a little bit of a rally off of the top. Um, we'll go into it a little bit, but you know, this is <coughs> not a stock that you want to be bottom fishing. We continue to get um, money flow sells, and we continue to get relative strength sells. Here, between two different ones. We actually had an earnings report that was quite negative. You still got another sell opportunity in here, one shortly before this earnings report. And what happened? Uh, the stock continues to disappoint and go down. So here we go, another stock. Great example of all the other concepts we've been talking about. Negative on shaken money flow, negative relative to the market, and persistently negative stock in shaken analytics. One thing that I've always believed in, and I think um, those of you that have been involved in the market as long as I have, <clears throat> maybe some of you even longer, is that old rising tide lifts all boats or the you want to get the sail um, behind your back, uh, wind behind your back. What you really want is you want to focus on sectors and groups that have tailwind. Um, this is really, I think, one of the greatest places to go to do your best for your clients to find stocks that are going to do well in their portfolio. And here's what we have. This is one of the magic pieces that I think that I've really liked using in Chaken Analytics. I know you will too. And that is to look for sectors that have strong power bars. So what is the power bar? The power bar basically takes each one of the spider sectors and defines names that are bullish and very bullish, neutral and bearish or very bearish. And those sectors that have more stocks that are poised for outperformance than stocks that are poised for underperformance performers are generally the sectors that you want to be looking at to find stocks. So we've highlighted two here, technology and energy. In all fairness, we've seen oil rally. It's certainly possible that energy will be making a turn, but what we would be looking for before we would be buying is some sort of personality change. At the moment, what we see is only three stocks within the energy select sector as bullish or very bullish, and indeed seven or bearish or very bearish. That's actually improved. At one point, there were zero names within the energy sector that were actually bullish or very bullish. So we've seen an uptick. Um, that may be a turn, but we highlighted anyway to show you some of the things that we've been looking at over time. So here's the XLK. This is the Select Spider for technology. You can see that uh, we've gotten persistent accumulation. Again, um, just like the SPY is, a, is a, an ETF that a lot of pros use, 
to get quickly involved in the market, uh, maybe before they make some individual stock selection. Here we say, boom, you can get into technology. So even technology, you've got persistent accumulation. That means that institutions have been buying the XLK. But what do we do here? We say, well, fine, here's you know a potential entry point within the XLK on a pullback. Um, here's another potential entry point. And then look at the actual stock. So when you pull up in Shaken Analytics, you pull up the XLK, it gives you all the stocks and it shows you which ones are bullish and very bullish. So whether it's Akamai, Applied Materials, Google, Intel, uh, LAM Research, Micron, you know, all names that have obviously had great runs, um, but they've all been bullish or very bur bullish for quite some time in Shaken Analytics. And the power gauge is the reason why. So here's LAM Research. I know we, we talked about it before as sort of one of the long-term examples that we've had because it's been a really consistent and easy one. We've got those earnings consistencies that we talked about as one of the primary, as one of the sub factors within the growth primary factor. Uh, we saw a uh, relative strength buy uh, recommendation right here, right in line with what was happening with the XLK. So when the tech stocks came down, great entry point. So while the XLK, you could have been buying it at 54-ish, maybe 55 on its way to 62, nice returns, even better in LAM. Here you bought the stock at sub 140, it's at 210. That's a 50% increase in the stock if you had been buying it on that relative strength buy. And again, all because you did your research, looked at which sectors were the best, very simple to do, and then looked at what stocks were in that ETF and that sector, and then picked the right name uh, using the powerful tools that we talked about, the ongoing consistency, the ideal setup. This is an ideal setup. Um, you know, so we look through and kind of look, focus on these industry groups. Um, you can, whether you talk about sectors or individual industry groups, indeed, um, there is a way to find good names, right? You got construction and building services. Well, what's been going on in there? Well, or we go back, auto, aerospace and defense, another one. So 22 bullish stocks in aerospace and defense. So only three negative. So what did we have here? Well, here, here's Orbital. Um, it was just recently bought out by Northrop Grumman. Um, again, seeing all the bullish personality changes like we talked about back here, even if you had waited and bought the stock after a period of consolidation, stock is very bullish in the power gauge, getting a lot of accumulation, taking money flow, very positive, institutions buying it. Even if you had bought it at sort of the 11th hour on this uh, latest money flow buy, boom, you wound up in a stock that had a huge buyout. Um, even if you said, hey, within aerospace and defense, I don't know anything about these smaller companies like Orbital, but Elbit, a little bigger stock, mid-cap stock, um, multiple cases where you would see uh, oversold buys, another buy alert that we've got. And because the group is strong, it's a strong stock and a strong industry. That's putting the wind at your back. That is the rising tide lifting the boat. So whether you had bought Orbital or EBIT, it was a name that had a very powerful rally in a group that was very strong. Um, last few things before um, we end the webinar, and that is that uh, Newell Brands, this was a stock that uh, as a subscriber, you get market insights once a week written by Mark Chaikin. You get to see what stocks are, are highlighted. Mark uh, had highlighted Newell Brands, which I used to refer to as Rubbermaid. Um, the old Rubbermaid, and he had highlighted as as his bear stock. And you can see what happened on the latest earnings report. What had Mark seen? He had seen exactly the things that we're talking about. A little bit of a personality change here. The market agreed with the model. The model had gone negative. The market was going down. We were seeing money flow going down. So despite this decent earnings, the stock was going down. Even if you had waited, as Mark had, to find the overbought sell, little rally here. If you had bought that, or I'm sorry, sold the stock on that rally, you were very happy when this earnings report came down and the stock got absolutely destroyed on their latest earnings report. And that's one thing that I will definitely leave you with. Um, 
commonly it's not the stocks you own, it's the stocks that you avoid. It's the stocks you don't own that make the big difference in portfolio returns. As a, as a long-term money manager, uh, I remember reading a white paper from Goldman Sachs. Goldman Sachs said, you know, even the best money managers are rarely right more than 50% of the time. Now, using Chaikin Analytics as a tool, I can tell you that I feel like I'm right far more than that. And that's one of the things that I've loved about using Chaikin Analytics. But leaving that aside, what is really important to professional money managers is making sure they don't get into the real clunkers. Don't get into the stocks that wind up being the big problems, the big losers. Avoid the weak industry groups. You've got to know what stocks not to buy. Don't put those stocks in your portfolio. When you eliminate bearish stocks and very bearish stocks from your portfolio, you improve your performance dramatically. And lastly, don't bottom fish. Uh, I love this comment. I know Mark's been tweeting it out. We've seen it from others. Bottom fishing is the most expensive sport in America. It is absolutely. Uh, I've seen it time in and time again. Long-term great investors that think that they're going to quote unquote catch the falling knife or as we used to say in the currency world, catch the falling safe. And ultimately, you don't want to be bottom fishing. Don't get involved in Chipotle. You can see why. Don't buy Under Armour. We've seen that chart and why. Don't buy Mattel. I mean, ultimately, they may be stocks that will have a personality change, much like First Solar did. But don't get involved in a stock that fundamentally still has problems and the market is telling you don't be involved. Bottom fishing is the most expensive sport in America, and you know, let's not be bottom fishers. Show you a couple quick examples. Schlumberger, you know, again, a lot of people would have said, "Wow, I can get it cheap here, or I can get it cheap here." Ultimately, this stock has been bearish uh, for almost the entire year. Um, as a matter of fact, here's that personality change that we've talked about already, and. We started seeing it underperform the market, institution selling, stock was either bearish or very bearish, and it's just continued to go down. So even on this last earnings report that says, well, geez, maybe it's time to buy this, wasn't all that bad, um, that's bottom fishing. Don't do it. Avoid that. Advanced Auto, uh, another stock I've been very familiar with over the years. Um, Ray J actually put a strong buy on it. Again, not to call any analyst out. Um, we all, we're all wrong at some point. Market can be very humbling. But one thing that is really helpful about Chaikin Analytics and why I know um, when you use it, you'll be very happy with your results are that here again was the personality change. Mark's been talking about Advanced Auto, O'Reilly, all the auto parts uh, companies for a long time. And indeed, this is a weak stock in a weak industry group. No reason to go out there and try to bottom fish on this one. It just continues to underperform and continues to disappoint. Mattel, we've already looked at this chart. Um, no reason to rehash it. But again, please don't go buying stocks that otherwise look very poor um, to go bottom fishing. So two quick other ideas that uh, just share with you. Uh, short Allergan was one that uh, Mark had put in his stock of the week, weekly recommendations on uh, September 8th. So, you know, going back two months ago, um, later in the month said buy DR Horton, which is uh, DHI, another stock that I've been very familiar with over the years, home builder, mainly focuses on, on homes for, 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 for millennial, for, for new home buyers, for time, first time home buyers. So here's Allergan. Um, there's a lot to say here, but I'm sure you could do the, the comments yourself looking at the chart. You know, Technically, the stock was kind of all over the map, didn't do much, and then all of a sudden we started seeing heavy institutional selling, got that sell recommendation on Allergan, and the latest uh, earnings report, even though it was positive, the stock still declined and it's back to its lows. Institutional selling, relative strength to the S&P poor, power gauge negative. Everything lining up on that stock, just avoid that one. Um, DR Horton, um, here was one where you saw strong institutional buying. This yellow line is where Mark had highlighted it in his weekly bullish report. And indeed, it's just 
done a moonshot since then. Um, notwithstanding whether or not this tax bill goes through and cuts mortgage deduction, we've seen home building, interest rates remain low. Uh, they're in a sweet spot with home buyers coming out and really powerful rally in the stock. So this finally is that secret sell signal. We've talked about it many times. But again, it's that shaken money flow, the bearish shaken money flow sell. This is where institutions are selling the stock, where you've got weak relative strength, we've got the power gauge negative, and institution is selling the stock. This is the combination of technicals and fundamentals lining up that money flow sell is truly, it stands alone, as we talked about earlier, as its own very powerful sell signal but in tandem with the other fundamental factors that are lined up with Chaken, the Chaken power gauge, that gives you the secret sauce to finding stocks to, to either get out of, like in the case of Chipotle, where you could see the power gauge turned negative and you had institutional selling. In Chipotle, you know, it had one E. coli scare, looked like maybe it was time to buy it, and then another one, and indeed we've sort of seen same store sales really disappoint on Chipotle. So the five key factors in successful investing, find bulls and bears with the chicken power gauge and relative strength that's positive. Use that chicken money flow. That is the secret to your success. You can anticipate future price movement using the chicken money flow. Use rules, and we give you those rules um, with our buys and sells. Uh, you can use rules to, to use the uh, entries and exits for the stocks. Use also the power bars and find stocks within strong sectors and industries. And ultimately, it's about playing good defense. Don't step on the landmines, and again, don't bottom fish. That's just good defense. Um, we're proud to say that uh, earlier this year, Chaken Analytics was awarded the 2017 Benzinga FinTech Award for Best Stock Ideas Platform. Uh, there were, I think, 17 entries, and we won it. It was great validation for what we all knew here already, which is that the platform works well, and it's a powerful tool. It's the 20 factors uh, in four primary factors that combine and work well together. It's a, a fundamental model uh, with a technical overlay, the very things that professional investors uh, look at. As a former portfolio manager, these are the very things that I look at when I try to find good stocks. The stock uh, discovery engine, which is one of the tabs that you'll be utilizing uh, to maybe switch out of names, is one of the main reasons why we won that FinTech award from Benzinga, but it's a great idea for idea generation. So you get the screener, which we showed earlier, to find those uh, check and money flow breakouts. You can also, if you're an options trader, we've got options play embedded in the platform. Works really well. Um, I personally don't do a lot of options, but those of you that do, it's a great tool. Uh, normally, check and analytics is $21.95, but for listening to me for nearly an hour now, uh, we're actually going to do a little special. Um, you will also wind up with daily charts. You get a, a great detailed earnings calendar and ultimately the Chaken Market Insights written by Mark. You also get John Schlitz's daily commentary. Uh, really powerful stuff. <clears throat> I've been out on the road as Mark is now talking to a lot of advisors. And one group that we ran into that thought was great, um, they, they were at Citigroup. They said in our weekly Monday morning review, we use Chaken Analytics to evaluate our equity holdings. We've more than doubled our assets under management to over $2 billion in the three years since we first subscribed to Chaken. The power gauge has kept us out of trouble while confirming our core research. So whatever your process is, whatever your clients are looking for, however you're trying to build your business, we know we're still in the stock business. Uh, this is a really good tool to look at things that you should be in and things that you shouldn't be in. And here's a great testimonial, $2 billion in AUM, they use Chaken Analytics. So you get small tutorials. Uh, we have one of the best onboarding groups in the business. I think you can call them as often as you need to, unlimited coaching and support, get one-on-one -on -one coaching. 
The da daily insights, I think, are really valuable to people. So <clears throat> last testimonial here from John Malden. I think a lot of you know who John is. Uh, we've been partners with John for a number of years. Uh, a lot of his clients are relatively bearish. I know John's been bearish, but he's really kept them out of trouble. Um, it's been integral to his uh, re routine due diligence for vetting and evaluate investments, and we really appreciate that comment from John. So checking analytics, twenty-one ninety-five, but for having to listen to me for the last hour, we're doing a, a webinar special for you. It's four hundred dollars off the, the the list price, seventeen ninety-five. Uh, I've used a lot of systems myself over the years. You know, Bloomberg itself, a single Bloomberg terminal is more than $2,000 for one month. This is an annual subscription for $1,795. That offer expires this Friday, um, November 10th. Uh, we'd love to have you on board. I know that our onboarding and, and client success team is there waiting for you to know that you're going to be a better investor as a result of Chaken Analytics. So thanks for being on, and, and Joe, I'll turn it back over to you. All right, great. Thank you so much, Carlton. And thanks, everybody, for joining us this afternoon. I know it's right at a little after 3 o'clock. But again, just to reiterate Carlton's offer, this is a, uh, an annual offer for Chaken Analytics, seventeen ninety five discounted rate. Uh, you can head right to chakenanalytics.com forward slash profits, or I did chat out that link directly within the chat window. Uh, that is available along with our phone number. We're going to be here all afternoon. You can reach us at 877-697-6783. Uh, we're available via email at sales at chakenanalytics.com as well as, again, just our website, shakenanalytics.com. Um, so with that said, I want to thank you again for joining us. Keep an eye out for the recording. We're going to try to get that out to you soon. Um, but uh, until then, have a great day, and uh, we will see you next time.